So today I'm gonna to talk about why I got the iPhone 12 mini. Yes, I finally upgraded my dying phone. For those that are new, I previously had an iPhone 8 Plus that was, for lack of a better term, half alive. The screen protector was broken, the microphone barely worked, it didn't vibrate, so I had to rely on hearing the ringer, and sometimes the ringer wasn't on, so it was just sitting there ringing while I was frantically trying to find it, turning over the covers and the pillows, searching my pockets, it was you know, just a mess. It got to a point where I couldn't talk to people without having my headphones on. I could yell as loud as I wanted to and it would sound like I was whispering to the person on the other side of the phone. So I had to use the headphones whenever I was taking a call and on top of all that, the battery was terrible. It was probably because the phone was almost 5 years old and I never replaced the battery. So I guess you could say it's kind of a good thing that the battery lasted that long. So it was actually kind of a funny story how I ended up getting the new phone. I was planning on getting a new phone for a while but it was just never the right price. I was comfortable paying $15 a month for it, but it never got there until now, and it definitely got there. I remember checking and seeing it at 25, then at 20, then it went to 15, and I kept delaying and delaying because I wanted to pay less, I'm not gonna lie. Then one day I came home from work and I wasn't expecting a change in any of the prices because it hadn't changed from me checking for like two weeks in a row. So it was just me checking, not even, you know, really caring. And, you know, like I said, I didn't expect any changes, but lo and behold, I went on the website and there it was. The iPhone 12 mini staring at me for a staggering $6.75 a month. I immediately texted my girl and told her that I was getting the phone, but it wasn't all smooth sailing from there. In the days to follow, I never got an email confirmation saying that my order was confirmed or anything like that, so I was left in the dark trying to figure out what happened. A few days after that, I received a call from customer service saying that my order was cancelled because they ran out of the phone that I wanted. I missed the call because I was at work, but I listened to the voicemail that they left me and they said to call back customer service to get it sorted. So I call back customer service and the rep tells me that they're willing to honor the $6.75 price or you know whatever it was. So I said, sure, I'll take the phone. By the time you're watching this, I'll have had the phone for about a month or so and so far I'm really liking it. I decided to get the 12 mini because I was looking to cut down on my screen time and you know, I've been doing that, but this phone is such a dream to use. It's smooth, it's fast, Face ID is actually better than I thought. I just love using this phone. I can't imagine what the 120 hertz is like on the 13 Pro and Pro Max, but you know, the reason I got the 12 mini instead of the 13 mini is because of the price. I just couldn't pass up on the phone for $6.75 a month. I was trying to future-proof myself and getting the 13, but that would have cost me like $40 a month plus the price of my plan. The phone would have basically been the same price of my plan and that was just a little too expensive for me. I should also mention that I'm going caseless. I'm taking the risk and I'm using the phone the way it was meant to be used. If you have your phone near you right now, take it out of the case and just admire how nice it is out of the case. Be careful not to break it though. I did get Apple Care Plus, which is gonna cost me like $11 a month, but you know, I don't mind paying something like that right now. I remember before that I just thought it was just a bullshit cost just to get you to try to spend more money, but then I realized, just like peace of mind, you can never go wrong with having it. But I will say that if I didn't have Apple Care, I would probably have it in a case. A major concern I was having was with the battery. From the videos I watched and the reviews I read, it seemed like everybody was having battery issues with the 12 mini not lasting long enough. I saw some conflicting reports where some people said they got 3 hours of screen time, some people got 4.5, and, and I realized that it all comes down to how you use the phone. Some people are on their phone all day so they're using it a lot, others, like me, only use it when I'm on break at work or when I'm commuting or when I come home to wind down for a bit. So those concerns quickly dwindled after trying the phone out for itself. Another concern I thought I was gonna have was that I might have had some trouble adjusting to the smaller size of the phone. 
Coming from an 8 Plus, I thought there was gonna be an adjustment period going from a big phone to a small phone, but everything so far has been fine. The keyboard is still good to use, even though my hands are, you know, pretty big. And I love the ability to use it one-handed because before I couldn't reach the diagonal opposite corner with my old phone, but now it's easy. I remember that I'd constantly tell my girl that I didn't want Face ID. I dreaded having to get it because I was just so used to Touch ID. It was a button, it was fast, it was simple and easy until I got Face ID. Face ID is actually a really excellent thing that they've added. Granted, you know, they did add it back in, you know, the 2017 with the iPhone 10 before any of the world events that have taken place in the past two years. So, you know, it predates that. But if you did still want Touch ID, there was the SE that came out last year, back in 2020. Well, now I guess by the time you're watching this, it'll be not last year, it'll be 2020. Face ID is fast, it's super easy and I love it. It recognizes me in the dark. It recognizes me with or without my glasses on. It recognizes me with any of my hats on. It's actually really great. I, it doesn't recognize me with a mask on, but you know, I didn't expect that anyway. But there actually is a little bit of a way to like finesse your way around it. What you can do is you can go into your face ID settings and set up an alternate appearance with your mask on and it works. So that's one way you can kind of finesse your way around face ID while, you know, still wearing a mask. But overall, I'm really enjoying having this phone. Like I said before, it was time for an upgrade because my old phone was just about four years old. I upgraded in January of 2018, I'm pretty sure. So I've had this phone for like 45 or 46 months. It's now gonna live in my camera bag as my phone that I use for the drone. I wasn't gonna use my new phone for the drone because the screen is like, you know, really small. So now my old big phone is gonna be the drone phone from now on. But you know, like I said, I am really enjoying the phone. I haven't had any issues so far and it's been a great experience. For $7 a month plus Apple Care, it wasn't a deal I could pass up because I got a new phone and Apple Care for less than $20 a month and that's not something I'm complaining about. I'm obviously not going to try to break the phone on purpose. If an accident happens, it happens. But you know, like I said, that's what I have the insurance for. You can't put a price on that. If you're looking to upgrade your phone and you're coming from, I'd say anything older than like an 11, I would say this is a very good upgrade. At the end of the day, it's still an iPhone and you know, I expect to have this phone for at least the next two years, but my previous phone lasted me almost four. So, you know, we'll see kind of where it goes from there. But for now, I'm very satisfied with my purchase. Let me know if you have any questions about the phone and I'll do my best to answer them down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.